no matter what your student, and I apologize, I'm going to use the phrase student and son and daughter interchangeably today. I know for some of you it may not be a son or daughter, maybe another relationship, but um, I'll go back and forth on those. No matter what your student majors in here at Washburn, uh, there are really three parts to the curriculum, okay? And this is a little bit of the nursing business, allied health, you name it, there are those three parts. First of all, the kind of foundation level is what we call general education Washburn. Okay. The second level is the major, those courses that constitute the major. In business, it's 63 hours of coursework that constitutes the major, for example. Uh, different other majors have their own flavor. And then there are some electives. Now, some curriculums at Washburn have curriculum, sorry, have no electives, okay, or have very limited electives. The nursing majors have very few electives, like maybe one class or something like that. In business, there are eight hours built into the 124. Now, of course, if students want to take additional hours, we never stop them from doing that. Uh, as long as you keep paying for them, we'll keep, we'll keep it on them. But, uh, but uh, uh, anyway, every major has this, and every major has a flavor of general education. Some of it's common across the university, but some of it varies by major. And I'll talk a little bit about those differences here in just a second. Okay. Well, why do we have this thing called Gen Ed? <clears throat> this is one of those questions that we get all the time. You know, why does my son or daughter have to take, you know, they're going to be a nurse, why do they have to take a history class or a political science class or something like that? Business majors always ask, why do I have to take a science class? Okay, and the answer that we oftentimes give the students is the same answer you've given your student now for many years, and what's the best answer you can give? Because I said so. Okay, that's usually works. Well, I, it's not really quite that simple, but um, if we think about it, what we want students to be able to do uh, really throughout college and throughout the rest of their lives is to learn to think, to exercise that gray matter in a systematic way to accomplish some objectives. A lot of different purposes. Uh, some of them you know, we, we already know about. Uh, exploration of new subjects, for example. You never know what's going to happen. How many of you are students know exactly what they want to major in and exactly what they want to do with their life. Okay. That could change, by the way, for those of you who are sure. Okay. A long time ago, in a land far, far away, I attended a place called Ohio University. Uh, the original O. Uh, not like the one down south here that should be U O. Your only spelling or something. Yeah, why do you know that? Well, do I understand because we had one of those too in Ohio. But then there's a school down the road here in Lawrence that's University of Kansas. It's I don't know. I don't know. Pardon? The University of Kansas. It's like the University of the Ohio State University. Well, I graduated from the Ohio University. <coughs> and anyway, it was founded in 1803, so it's an old. In any case, I was at freshman orientation, and I thought I wanted to be an electrical engineer. It was all I really cared about when I was 18 years old, besides the normal thing that 18 year old boys care about, which were, I think, girls and beer. <laughs> Maybe in that order, too. Uh, was loud car radios. And this is back in the day before there were loud car radios. Some of you remember those days when you just sit at a stoplight and your car didn't shake because of, you know, remember those days? <laughs> AM radios were kind of standard equipment. Uh, but, but that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to design car stereo equipment. That was my, that was my hobby in high school, and that's kind of what I wanted to do college work. So I signed up to be an electrical engineering major. And I went to freshman orientation. My parents were with me. We did kind of what you're doing today. And at the end of the day, we got ready to register for classes. I signed up for my calculus class and my math, all well, my chemistry class and my intro to engineering class, and, and I, saw, I had to take a speech class. I think, that was part of the curriculum in engineering. And I signed up for it closed. Signed up for it closed. They were all closed. So I didn't want to do. So I go back to my advisor, and he's Mr. Engineer. Okay, flat top haircut. <laughs> you know, remember the Right Stuff movie? You know, some of those guys. That's what he looked like. Okay, I don't know. It's about 20 years later. Uh, pocket protector just full of, you know, all kinds of equipment. And he looked at me and he said, Mr. Sollers, uh, apparently speech is closed, all speech sections are closed, 
being a fool, that's the terminology we use. Um, you need to take a class in a social science. Why don't you take economics? It's always open. You know. And I'm like, okay. And I had no clue what economics was, didn't have it in high school, etc. So I signed up for economics and I loved it. And now three degrees later, they made me get a job at a university because I love college so much. And here I am, Dean of the School of Business at Washburn. I'm an economist by training, which makes me very unpopular right now. Um, but you listen to me right now. I may be unpopular, but you listen to me. In any case, you know, but for that speech class being closed, I really don't know where I'd be in life today. But they, it's funny how those things happen. That's going to happen to some of your students as well. They're going to take that class and they're going to say, wow, this is cool stuff. I want to do this. Or maybe the class, you know, the classes they take will turn the other direction. I don't want to do that. We see that a lot in accounting classes. Um, <laughs> mom and dad convinced Susie she wants to be an accountant, and then she decides, no way, am I not be an accountant? Accounting's actually pretty good. Um, this other thing, developing skills. This is another thing about Gen Ed. Read and write arithmetic. I'd like to say that all the graduates of uh, come out of high school today uh, are very proficient in the basic skills. And if I said that, I'd be lying to you. Sometimes students don't come with the best math skills, the best English skills, or those foundation skills that they need to have to move through the, the, the rest of their, their, their time with us here at Washburn. Uh, so we're going to make sure that we get that foundation settled. Now, some of your students have already completed some of that reading and or that, that writing and math stuff in high school. Okay, some of that dual enrollment stuff that's being done, or the AP stuff, um, some of that's already done. We also want to be able to think in new ways, to think about different things. You know, the way an economist thinks about the world, and the way a political scientist thinks about the world, and the way a biologist thinks about the world are a whole lot different. And we want to expose them to those different ways of thinking. Be able to put things together. Uh, you know, you guys have all learned, like, like any adult, you know, older adult, Life is not a series of multiple choice questions, is it? It's not a series of true and false. It's not even story problems. Remember story problems? Okay. Life is unstructured problems. You've got to figure out what the problem is first before you can solve it. And hopefully we do some of that in Gen Ed. The last thing is being creative. There, there are certain parts of the Gen Ed program that allow them to actually either be creative or learn about creativity. Um, and I'll talk more about that in a second. Okay. Practical uses. <coughs> Obviously, we want them to have some life skills, and that will come out of some of the Gen Ed classes they take. Job skills, especially if they're, they're related to the major, that'll be important. Adaptability. You know, when I was going to school, the whole idea was you were going to go get a job for a firm, work for that firm for 30 years, retire with a gold watch mm -hmm. type thing. You know, now you look at resumes of 20 somethings, they've worked for five different companies. Okay? People have to be. As we move, I think in the future, I think, people have been very adaptable, okay? The career that, uh, how many of you are in careers now that didn't exist when you were in school? Okay. Anyone in the computer you know, area uh, might apply to. We also want to give us a little bit of fundamentals and some citizenship possibilities. That's what I like them to take economics so they can understand what's going to be talked about today. Uh, for example, that's just my, my uh, Brother was at work. Plus, I'm giving the lecture so I can talk later. <laughs> little sales and shit here. Okay. Let's get into the <coughs> line print. There are two university or two English classes required as part of the Gen Ed program. English 101, <coughs> uh, lifetime wellness, and then three hours of mathematics. Let's go a little deeper here. Um, sorry, before we get to that, there are also some distribution requirements, which I'll come back to. These are classes they have to take. That last one, every student has to do that. This one, it depends on the area, it depends on the major, whether they take 9, 12, or 15 hours in the distribution requirement. And if they are in a substitute degree program, they have to take six hours in, in those Gen Ed groups. Okay, six hours in English. English 101, typically, typically taken during the freshman year. Okay, maybe not the first semester, but it's at least by the second semester, it should be done. Again, this is one that, that some students have already taken. Uh, if they've come out here to take it uh, at Washburn as a student already, uh, they, or, um, 
when they took it in high school in part of a dual enrollment program, uh, concurrent enrollment program, I'm sorry. Uh, English 300 is a, is a composition class designated for the junior year. So now sometimes students take it at the end of the sophomore year or the summer in between or something like that. But that's kind of the, the two English requirements here at Washington that they have to do. And every student has to complete those. What about English 102? English 102, uh, we don't do that here at Washington. Oh, okay. uh, some other universities do English 1 and English 2 the first year. We do it first year, junior year. A lot of schools in Kansas do one and two first year. Um, you know, it, it varies. The school I, I was at in Alabama before I came here, we had one, two, and three. Um, <coughs> right now, um, this is a class that kind of has two components to it. The first component yes. is an activity. This is kind of like the phys ed stuff. Remember your phys ed classes you had to take? You know, that you can take golf or, or um, weightlifting or uh, some of those type of classes of that activity and so you learn about that and hopefully you pick something you either want to do or you're, you're good at or you want to learn about. But the other part is a, uh, is a, a focus on wellness. Okay, what constitutes wellness? Not just mind, um, not just body, but mind as well. Uh, nutrition, those type of things. How do you live in you know, long life, those type of things. Uh, so that class will be required of all students here at Washington. And then every student Washington has to take at a base level um, exploring mathematics. I think that's called. Is that what it's called? Uh, yes. You, you corrected me last time. And college algebra. Okay. Or college algebra. So depending on the area, they have to do that. Now, majors have requirements on top of that. Some majors and some don't. Okay. For example, in the business curriculum, no matter what you study in business, you have to take Math 140 and Math 141 on top. Obviously, if you go into the sciences and stuff, there'll be a lot more math on top of that. So, but that will fulfill the, the university requirement. Then we get into those distribution requirements. And again, depending on the area, depending on the uh, major that, that your student chooses to go into, you'll have to complete 9, 12, or 15 hours in some kind of distribution. So we've got the humanities area. And this falls under the arts and humanities area. So students have to choose courses in these areas, okay, and fulfill those distribution requirements. They can also choose classes in these areas as well. Okay, so like art appreciation, theater appreciation, we call this the enjoyment of music, right? Okay. Um, so they have to take those type of classes. My younger son, for example, took uh, art history, and I think it fulfilled one of those requirements there. Uh, now, some majors have already determined what those are going to be. Okay? For example, a business major is going to have to burn at least three hours in a speech class. Okay? And that's probably one of the more common speeches required in a lot of But um, then we got the natural sciences, and students have to complete, again, those extra hours, those 9, 12, 15 hours in these different areas. And then we have the social sciences. And students have to complete, again, 9, 12, or 15 hours, hours in these areas. Uh, I like the one at the top myself. <laughs> but political science, history, psychology, sociology, anthropology are also a part of the social sciences. Now, some of these courses, you know, they tend to be freshman, sophomore level classes. So we encourage students to always try to get those out of the way. Uh, and again, depending on the curriculum, for example, in business, we require that a student complete two of these three. Uh, for behavioral science purposes. Um, <coughs> uh, that's just the way we, we have our curriculum. So the different majors have different things and, and they'll, when, when your student meets with the advisor, they'll be able to learn more about that. <coughs> okay. Well, that's kind of the Gen Ed program. Does anyone have any questions about the Gen Ed program? Yeah. 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 Y